And um, to introduce yourself, just stop thinking for a moment. Just allow your mind and body just to relax. And recognize that there is an intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now. There's an intelligence that's aware of everything that's going on. There's an intelligence that feels yourself sitting in the chair, can hear these words. It's the ability to know, the power to know. So this intelligence in the Balanced View training we call open intelligence. And it's open because it allows for everything. It allows us to experience everything. This intelligence that we are. And there's a very simple instruction set in the Balanced View training that allows you, first of all, to recognize this openness of intelligence and then to become more and more familiar with it in everyday life. So, this was something that in my case I had um, looked into for many years and um, read many books about from lots of different perspectives and had um, very powerful glimpses of in my life, you know, this spontaneous recognition of the inseparability of everything. And yet, my understanding was almost entirely intellectual. So having the idea that everything is interconnected, or having the idea that everything is one. And yet, the reality in, in my lived experience was um, one of feeling very separated, feeling often very lonely, um, and really being at the mercy of everything that I thought or felt. And in the Balanced View training, all of those thoughts and emotions and physical sensations we can just call data. And um, until I had the instinctive recognition, increasingly in my life, of the inseparability of whatever I was thinking, feeling or sensing from this vast open intelligence, then it seemed like all of my thoughts and emotions and sensations and experiences had a power over me and had the power to fundamentally affect me and an empower, a power to inform my actions or make me act in certain ways and often those were ways that I didn't like and I wasn't happy about. So um, a great example of that is anger. That's, it's such a powerful experience. You know, when, when something or somebody, usually somebody, pushes your buttons and there's that rush of anger, it, it, it's, so, it's so powerful and it's so obvious. And I experimented for many years, you could say, with the conventional ways of dealing with anger. And the conventional ways, as, as we heard in the video, can really just be simplified down into either indulging in the data, in this particular case, anger. So indulging in anger would be, um, in many cases, you know, saying something, often quite forcefully, in a, in a very um, heated way telling somebody why they were pissing me off and what they needed to stop doing or what they needed to start doing. And often this led to confrontation and a feeling of extreme anxiety and, and dis-ease. You know, that, that rush of, you know, when you've said something out of this rush of anger, it just feels terrible afterwards. And, um, so I knew that feeling of how bad it made me feel to, to act out on my anger. So then the other approach that I adopted was to, um, was to try and replace this anger or avoid the anger. And there were different ways that I, I had to, that I used to replace or avoid the anger. So when the anger came up, one of the ways I would do is I would replace that with a feeling of basically, um, non-responsiveness. So I would just push that anger down and try and, and, and really hold it at, at bay. 
and um, you know my jaw would clench quite often, and there would that but that almost felt as bad as acting out on the anger. You know this this tension that I seemed to carry within me, and um, although that might have stopped confrontation at certain points, it just meant that it it built up and up and up. And when it came out then, then that felt really bad because it came out in a in a rush of expression that was just completely overwhelming. And then I found myself saying things and doing things that you know, I felt ashamed and embarrassed about and just didn't want to be behaving like that. But, but what could I do about it? So these were the, the options that I had. I could indulge it, avoid it, or, 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 or replace it. And avoiding it as well was often was avoiding people or places or things that, that made me feel angry. Certain people that I knew pushed my buttons. I'd just do whatever I could to avoid being with them. But the problem was with these approaches that no matter how hard I tried to indulge, avoid or replace the anger, it, it, it never resolved it because it, it always came back. Something else would come up that would push my, my angry button. You know, it didn't matter how much I suppressed it or even if I thought I'd got it off my chest and, and told somebody about it and, okay, well, that's, isn't that what you're meant to do? And, uh, uh, but it didn't work because it came back again often with the same person about the same thing. And, um, but it, I didn't know what else to do. I didn't have any other tools to deal with something like anger. So in the Balance View training, I was introduced to a, an amazing practice, which was for short moments, just to allow everything to be exactly as it is. And um, at the beginning, when I was introduced to this, this practice, it, it, it sounded like a great idea, but more importantly, it was something that I could test out for myself. So in the first open meeting, even though much of what I heard, I couldn't really make sense of or, or understand, I took away <coughs> the, the instruction of, of taking a short moment throughout the day whenever I nat naturally remembered. It's a short moment of just relaxing and allowing yourself to be just as you are. A short moment of just stopping the describing or a short moment of relaxation. And I tested this out for myself. And it was amazing for me to discover that whenever I took a short moment of just relaxing my mind and my body, there was open intelligence. Inseparable from whatever I was experiencing. So at the beginning, it seemed easiest for me to take a short moment when I was in the open meeting or when I was listening to one of the talks from the website. Somehow these talks reminded me or pointed me back to my capacity just to relax and allow everything to be as it was. Things like anger um, were still so compelling that it was very difficult to allow anger to be as it was even for a, an instant, even for a short moment. But through the practice of short moments repeated many times and through my own deepening assurance that for these short moments I could just allow myself to be exactly as I was without needing to do anything with what was going on. And through building up that assurance and that confidence through repeating this, there came a point when I found within myself the, the, the courage and the strength to allow anger to be as it was. And if you're at that stage in, in your practice, then it's an incredible power within the anger that becomes transformed for the benefit of all. So there's such power in anger, everybody knows that. And when we're at the mercy of that power, then it seems like a terrible thing, anger. How could there possibly be any benefit in it? However, through the practice of the Four Mainstays, through the practice of short moments, listening to the talks on the media or participating in trainings, through spending time with the community, other people that are also taking short moments and relying on the Four Mainstays, and through developing a relationship with a Balanced View trainer, these are the Four Mainstays, 
the capacity to recognize the inseparability of open intelligence from all data becomes more and more obvious. And so there came a point for me when, without trying to, I found myself taking a short moment with anger. And the relationship that I have now with anger is that I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it because I am not a victim to it anymore. In that anger, in that power, there is such benefit because when I allow the anger to be as it is and I don't act out on it, I don't react to it, I don't bottle it up, I don't try and avoid it, but I allow it to be exactly as it is, then it opens out, it expands into its true definition, which is the beneficial potency that allows me to respond in a way that will be of benefit to myself and everybody in that circumstance. That's not what I learned that anger was. So practically what that means is that when anger comes up and I allow it to be as it is, that same power allows me to speak or to act in a way that can be very clear and very direct, but is actually fueled by love and the desire to be of benefit. That's what that anger really is. It's not a wishy-washy kind of love. It can be very wrathful and very, very powerful. And we discover that capacity within ourselves just by allowing the anger to be as it is for short moments. So the reason that I love anger is that when I get angry, I know that what I'm accessing is this capacity to speak very clearly and very directly if that is what is required in that circumstance. That same power that used to take me down is now something that I can utilize for the benefit of all. And so when that feeling of anger arises, just to allow it to be as it is, without describing it, without doing anything with it. And what's important there, particularly with these really powerful emotions and these surges of energy that we're used to acting on or repressing or doing something with, is to have the support of the community and of a trainer to ensure that when we do utilize this energy for the benefit of all, when we allow it to be as it is, and then something comes out that can often be very surprising that is actually exactly what is required for that circumstance and that, that situation to check in with the trainer about that. Because it can be easy to adopt subtle ideas about what that looks like or the way that we're acting and to justify reliance on open intelligence for behaviours that aren't actually acceptable. And the support is essential because it means that we don't isolate ourselves in other ideas about what open intelligence is. And so we have this incredible support system that allows us to train up our capacity to be of benefit. And the desire to want to support other people and ourselves is innate. We want the best for ourselves. You know, I'd always wanted to be happy. I'd always wanted to live a good life. And I'd worked really hard at that. I'd always wanted to be able to support the people in my life that I cared about. But what I've seen is that the most effective way for me to support other people is for me to gain confidence in open intelligence. That's where I find the wisdom and the skill in knowing and seeing what to say and what to do that will most effectively support other people. 